Oh, I'm sorry. Did you think we were done? 2022 saw hundreds of new games launch on the Nintendo Switch, but 2023 ain't no different, Buster. Okay. Sorry, I regret saying Buster. I'm starting again. <laughs> 2023 ain't no different. Bucko? All right. We already know of at least 40 great games coming to this console next year. And who knows what's going to get announced for next year? The surprises, the shadow drops, the Nintendo Directs. Are we going to get new hardware even? I'm going to do some speculating about some stuff at the end. And if you want even more in-depth thoughts on all of this stuff, I have a podcast episode. We break down a lot of these games as well as our theories and speculations for next year. So please go watch that. But watch this first. Because, you know, this is mine. This is more important. <laughs> All right, let's get started. We have a lot of games to get through. Although I am kind of hungry. You want to make food first? Let's do that. You know, we're all looking forward to these games coming to Switch next year. But while you're thinking about next year, maybe think about your own cooking habits. What are you eating? What are you buying? How healthy are you? Are you using HelloFresh? This is true. I should probably put that knife down. This is true, actually. Kim and I learned to cook using HelloFresh. We've been paying for this for like two or three years now. Five. Five? In fact, they did send us some HelloFresh for the sponsor, but we actually pay, are still paying customers, so we have double of one of them. I'm not kidding, I paid for one of these. The thing we love so much about HelloFresh is before this, we couldn't cook to save our freaking life. And like, we would try and get recipes, and then you gotta go to the store, you gotta find the spices, you gotta find the bell peppers, you gotta find everything, it takes forever, and then you finally have it all, you get home, you probably forgot something, so you improvise, instead of a pear, you use a tomato or something. You know what's good about this? They send everything you need in one bag, you're never missing anything, you get the instructions right here, each one takes like 30, 30 minutes and HelloFresh is cheaper than grocery shopping and 25% cheaper than ordering takeout. Oh, also Kim's mom lives with us, so we got we got enough for four people. All right, okay, welcome into the kitchen. What we got going? 425 degrees. <laughs> Forgot to put my hair up. Salt and pepper. Season everything. Put a little bit of honey Dijon on each one. Now I'm just sprinkling with a bit of Monterey Jack. Beautiful. Mwah. Five minutes. Alexa, set a timer for five minutes. Five minutes, starting now. <laughs> green beans, green beans, green beans. The healthy American treat. And if it's variety that you're after, HelloFresh has over 35 meals to choose from. Alexa, I get it. Put chicken in. Alexa, you better be stopping. All right. I watched the cloud go into your face. <laughs> Middle racket said. Now while all that's happening, we gotta make the garlic bread and we're pretty much done. We're just doing like the last step right now. Mind your fingers. I'm minding my fingers. Hey, you worry about your- No! Nice throw. <laughs> but you're impressed. I'm not, I'm terrified actually. This literally took under half an hour. Uh, it was super easy to do, and I've made dinner for four people. Well, three plus me, I eat a lot. If you wanna get some HelloFresh, this is the first time they have ever worked with me. I've been trying so hard to get HelloFresh for the last five friggin' years. Hey, if you wanna get some HelloFresh, there'll be a link down in the description down below. Or go to HelloFresh.com and use code BEATEMUPS18 to get 18 free meals plus free shipping. I mean. I think I nailed that. It dropped off at the door, and we get this fresh, homemade meal for the whole family with freaking crispy garlic bread. All right, well, we're gonna sit down and have freaking dinner that I made. Thanks, HelloFresh. And again, link down below or go to HelloFresh.com and use code BEATEMUPS18. Get 18 free meals. I'm gonna go eat dinner now. 
Actually, no, I gotta finish the stupid video. I've been cooking this whole time. Nintendo Switch fans don't have to wait long into the new year. Three short weeks. On January 20th, we get our first exclusive game launch on the console. Fire Emblem Engage. A love letter to all Fire Emblems as it reaches back and pulls characters and content from past entries in the series. A narrative-focused, turn-based tactics RPG that also has fishing. So, love me some fishing. You might be wondering why you should care about SpongeBob SquarePants Cosmic Shake dropping on the Switch in January, but it's because the developers that are making this game also worked on Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated, and they're making this one as like a spiritual sequel. The highly praised Tales of Symphonia is getting a remaster on Switch February 17th. The GameCube and PlayStation 2 classic spawned manga adaptations, two novel series, seven drama CDs, and an anime series. So here's your chance to play it for the first time if you haven't already. What you been waiting for? I haven't played it either. PlayStation Vita's Digimon World Next Order is getting ported to the Switch in February. It's an RPG set in an open world environment with no visual novel elements anywhere to be seen, thankfully. Alteria Riser 3, Alchemist of the End and the Secret Key. Look, I don't know what that title is supposed to be, but the game actually looks pretty good. It's an adventure RPG and looks like a mix of Breath of the Wild and Genshin Impact. There are multiple open areas that are all connected and you roam around in them with 11 different party members. This will be my first time playing a game in the series and I think it looks pretty fun. Kirby Return to Dreamland Deluxe is a remaster of the Wii game. I never played the Wii game. This does look pretty good, but I also have a lot of Kirby burnout right now. We've had like 17 Kirby games in the last six months. What do I look like? And dude, never did I think we would see a sequel to Octopath Traveler. I thought when they moved on to try triangle strategy, they would just, you know, move on. But here we are with another 2D HD game in this series set with all new characters and an all new setting. They kept the name though. Octopath Trap. You want to use that a second time? Fatal Frame Mask of the Lunar Eclipse launches March 9th. It's a remaster and doesn't really add too much of anything to this release, but it does offer players a chance to play this Wii game portably in 2023. And sometimes that's all we need from Nintendo to give them money. Actually, most of the time. Bayonetta is going Going back to its origins with Cereza and the lo the uh, hold on and the Lost Demon. I remembered a spin-off of the Bayonetta series and a big departure from the standard Bayonetta flair. A different art style, a different gameplay style, even different combat. This one could go either way from me. I haven't seen enough, but for sixty dollars, I gotta see a lot more. Have a nice death. Looks like Hollow Knight and Ori spent a night in a shady motel room. Now we have this. It's got a fantastic cartoony art style charming animation, and oh boy, I think this little baby's gonna be a hit. After one whole year, we're finally getting Mega Man Battle Network Legacy Collection, containing all six main games that were released back on the GBA. I mean, do I even have to say it? I could probably just give you the date. May 12th. Zelda, baby! I'm so excited. Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom on May 12th. Easily the most anticipated game of the last several years for many of us. Oh, and the opposite of that, we have Hogwarts Legacy. Uh, don't, don't get me wrong, the game actually looks pretty great. I mean, everything we've seen looks really fantastic, but there's no shot this is performing well on Switch. I mean, they showed gameplay of like swooping down and flying around. What are we talking here, like 5, 10 FPS on Nintendo? We have a hard date right now of like July 25th, but I think there's no shot. It's either going to get delayed or possibly scrapped all together. Might even move to cloud streaming if we even see it on the console. Speaking of all-time favorites, Persona 4 Golden is my all-time favorite JRPG, and it, along with Persona 3 Portable, is coming to the Switch sometime this year. A E. W is the only wrestling promotion that matters right now, in my opinion, and their debut video game, Fight Forever, launches... I was actually told this in secrecy, so don't tell anybody, but, like, early in the year. Although that hasn't been confirmed officially, and with how these things go, it might end up getting delayed. Another sequel I never saw coming, Hades 2. The first game is easily my favorite roguelike of all time, and now Supergiant Games looks to one-up themselves. You play as the door 
order of Hades this time around. I hope this game goes a long way to differentiate itself from the first, but we will see. Story of Seasons, A Wonderful Life is a remake of Harvest Moon, A Wonderful Life because it's the same developer, but he lost the rights to his own games. So now he remakes them all. Just they're called Story of Seasons now. I love that he's doing that. I will say I don't, I, the art style, it does not appeal to me, but that's just me. Although speaking of farming games, Fae Farm is a cozy farm sim RPG for one to four players coming in spring exclusively for Switch. And this one could actually be decent. I might try playing this with Kim. Oh, Pikmin. Pikmin, Pikmin, Pikmin. Nintendo has promised us Pikmin in 2023, but doesn't Pikmin 4 in 2024 just sound better? I mean, it rolls off the tongue, Miyamoto. I'm not saying I don't want it next year. I'm just saying they have a long history of delaying their games and Pikmin specifically. It sounds like this time they're trying to shake up the format and honestly, I'm down for that, as long as we get new Pikmin. Disney Illusion is a four-player couch co-op platformer that kind of has Rayman vibes. It looks like it could be fun. I don't know how I only just now noticed this. Disney Illusion, and it's a Mickey platformer. So like Castle of Illusion, back on the Genesis. I love that. That's really cool. Ah, oh, Iron Man, Thor, Buster Brown. You're all sick of Marvel, right? Me too, just like Star Wars. Well, good news, there's more coming. We got Marvel Midnight. <laughs> Suns. It's already released everywhere else, but we're still waiting for our Switch port. It's a tactical turn-based game with our favorite Marvel characters. You know, like Buster Brown. Silk Song! I mean, there's no way it doesn't happen in 2023. Right? Right? A remaster of Rune Factory 3 is launching on Switch next year, and I think the plan is just to slowly drip feed all the Rune Factories onto the console. Okay, I'm fine with that. Another spin-off of Minecraft called Minecraft Legends is coming to the Switch. It's an action strategy game which has co-op and multiplayer and uh, I, I, I don't know about this one. The graphics are a bit bleh, kind of looks like that weird free-to-play Trove game I looked at once on the channel. If you enjoy my time at Porsche. It was kind of a little hidden gem for a lot of people. Well, the developers kickstarted and crowdfunded my time at Sandrock. So this is the second game in the series. It's a mix of a farm sim and role-playing game. Can somebody tell me why Super Bomberman R is getting a sequel? I know the first one was in the first seven launch titles for the Switch. Just because it sold a lot, I kind of feel like that would be by default. I mean, literally one of seven. I don't think anyone's been clamoring over a sequel. Other than maybe Bob Wolf from a Nintendo podcast who weirdly only likes that game and Mario Maker on Switch. Not a man of many tastes. If you're not excited for another Crab's Treasure, which is a Souls-like action adventure game where you play as a hermit crab, you're pretty much a lost cause and I nor anybody can help you. Blanc is a black and white emotional journey where you and a friend play as a wolf cub and a fawn lost in a snowstorm. Working together with simple control Trolls, you guide them through the unforgiving weather and keep them both safe. For the love of God, please keep them both safe. If anything happens to either of these, I'm not gonna be okay. Look, there's a new RoboCop game coming next year, and yeah, yeah, it's probably going to be bad. I mean, it looks bad, but if I, it's, I, I have, I'm hoping, man. <laughs> For one, this is really my only chance to put a first-person shooter in one of my lists. I mean, that just doesn't happen on the Switch. And two. It's freaking Robocop. Can a man not dream? Developers.emu, who worked on the TMNT Shredder's Revenge game, said, why can't Metal Slug be a tactics game? They've kept the classic art style and beautifully animated pixel art, but thrown in this new gameplay style in a brand new twist. Unique games like Jet Set Radio Future or Jet Grind Radio Headset, or whatever it's called elsewhere, only come around once in a teeny while. So finally getting the spiritual successor, Bomb Rush Cyberfunk next year will be a breath of fresh air. Featuring roller skates, skateboards, and a nostalgic cell shaded art style. Look, I promise one day I will play Coffee Talk. But until then, you all can look forward to Coffee Talk 2, Hibiscus and Butterflies. A heart-to-heart -heart talking simulator about listening to fantasy-inspired modern people's problems and helping them by serving up a warm drink or two. You know, last weekend, let me tell you a story in the middle of this video that Zach will definitely not cut out. He might not. Gumbarello was one of those standouts back in the...
Last weekend, I went to Bob's house and we all had a little party. A little, he's got a new house. We all went. We all got violently ill because he ordered Moe's catering. I thought that was a good idea. We all got so sick and this is the first time I've left bed in three days. Pooping and vomiting aside, he also made a bunch of coffee while we were there and it was like, mwah. Bob's Big Bean needs to be a thing. He kept making these delicious caramel macchiato lattes, iced and hot, whatever you wanted. He's a magician, man. It's the best coffee I've ever had. And he's just making it in his house. And I keep telling him to play this stupid game because you make coffee and he's like, nah, it's not for me. Moving out too, it's like overcooked, but if you were moving out in a hurry. And this is the sequel. Under my gumbarella, Ella, Ella, eh. A, A. Gumbarella was one of those standouts back in the Indie World Direct we had recently. It's an action adventure side scroller focusing on maneuverability and close quarters gunplay. You also use the Gumbarella, Ella, Ella for traversal in the game. Like gliding, swinging, dashing, and diving. Another quick story, my friend. Now we got some weird and wackies. My friends and I love Rihanna, my high school friends, and I always get a song stuck in my head. Every time we hung out, Halo Lands, Gear Lands, we would all just belt the new Rihanna songs. Shine bright like a diamond. Every time like one of us got like a double kill, that was like a victory cry. Shine bright like a diamond. We were shining bright, man. Now we got some weird and wackies. Payday 3 is supposed to be releasing next year, and it says when you Google that it's coming to Switch. I have not heard that anywhere before. I'm telling you, it's actually most likely not because that was one of those weird stories where they spent way too long working on the Payday 2 version for Switch and it completely bombed. It was a nightmare. I don't think the third one is coming to Switch, but Google thinks so. I thought it was funny. Here it is. Here's a wild one from me. We're getting Diablo 4 next year and I think the Switch can handle this new Diablo. I would like to see it at some point make its way over. We're definitely getting a little predicty now, but recently Activision and Call of Duty and Xbox, I don't know, they started talking about bringing the games to Switch. I have been wondering this entire generation where Call of Duty has been. I mean, we had it on Wii and Wii U. The active player base on Switch is 25 to 30, which is like the target age for Call of Duty. Where has it been? Well, now they want to bring it to Switch and a lot of people are wondering how that'll happen, but they're already releasing Warzone Mobile next year, and I think it's a pretty one-for-one -one obvious idea to just bring that free-to-play experience to the Switch and start cashing in on those sweet microtransactions. You're gonna be the only FPS on the console. You can really corner that market. Not too much is known about that Star Wars Hunters game that was revealed a little while back. It's a free-to-play, player-versus-player competitive arena game, and they're focusing on Switch, iOS, and Android. So it's kind of a console exclusive for Switch, and yet it's been delayed till next year and we know nothing about it. I actually have a fun story about it. I actually have a fun story about it, though, because I do know a little bit about it, but I can't talk about it, and then I accidentally did talk about it in the podcast. I don't know if it was breaking NDA, but if you want to hear the story of that, uh, it's in the podcast, so go go watch that. Oh, and if you're wondering which podcast, the one where we talk about games coming in 2023. It should be up on... Um... Zach, can you put the date here? It'll be up on that date. But oh, I got a couple more for you. Genshin Impact? Are we going to get that next year? At this point, I'll let you guys tell me down below. Yes or no? I can play it on my phone. Why can't I play it on my Switch? Something that hasn't been talked about but will most likely happen is something new with Pokemon next year because it happens every year. More than likely, it's going to be some DLC for Bugged and Glitched or Scarlet and Violet as some people like to call them. Hopefully, they'll release alongside a slew of bug patches. I swear to God, if we don't get a, a title, a, 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 a snippet about Metroid Prime 4, I'm going to lose my mind. I will go... I'm going to... I'm going to go bump bananas. I would love to know what has been happening with Metroid Prime this whole time. What happened to the first game you scrapped? Where is it now? I think by some point this year, maybe the tail end will at least get an update on the development progress. I really hope because this is getting weird. The last thing I can really think to speculate about without getting too crazy, of course. I'm not even going to look at you, F-Zero. New Switch hardware. I want to quickly give some thoughts on that. I 
did go into it more on my podcast, so I'm going to keep it really short. I still stand fast with my theory that we will get a new Switch in 2024. Alongside a Mario Odyssey 2 or a Mario Kart 9 or I don't know, something ultimate wacky that they would call it. The only reason why I think it would be Mario Kart is just if they don't want to do Mario Odyssey 2. It doesn't even have to be Odyssey 2, just a new Mario IP of some kind. The new main IP though, not like a spinny whack off. Okay. <laughs> Try that again. Not like a wacky spin-off. I mean like a new Mario, the likes of Odyssey releasing alongside a new Switch in 2024. So where does that leave us in 23? Because the Switch isn't exactly in date. I think we're just going to struggle through the year. I don't think we're getting a pro. I don't think we're getting any kind of revision. I mean, if you look at the games we know are coming for next year that are exclusives, they're all games that can very capably run on this car hardware that we have. I mean, Pikmin 4, that ain't draining anything. Breath of the Wild 2, it looks like they're using the same engine. We know that can run on the console. Now, sure, they could announce things moving forward next year. Things could get crazier pretty quick, pretty fast, but that's just the way I'm looking at it. All right, everyone, that is all the confirmed games for next year, but also I spliced in some fun ones and, and theories that I have as well. But what do you guys think? I mean, have a whole conversation down below. We have a whole year to find out if if you were right or wrong. If you had fun in this video, if you enjoyed it, if it helped you out, like the video, leave a comment down below. Subscribe, you know, we get a, let's get to 2 million. Let's do some goals for this guy. You know, 2023, maybe this channel passes 2 million subs. Maybe the podcast channel passes 100,000 subs. Get another plaque, get another button up on the wall. You set some goals for Twitch too, if you want. You can go follow me there. We won't bother setting any Twitter goals because that might be on fire by the end of the year. I love you guys and I'll see you, um, hopefully soon. Bye.